Today we're going to be diving into one of the most beautiful and profound equations in all physics, Einstein's field equations. These equations are the beating heart of general relativity. They describe how mass and energy tell space-time how to curve and how that curvature tells objects how to move. But there's more. They also hint at something even deeper, dark energy, the mysterious force accelerating the expansion of our universe. And here it is. This might look a little intimidating at first, but it's basically the universe's balance sheet. The left-hand side describes the geometry of space-time, aka how it curves, bends, and stretches. The right-hand side describes the content of space-time, and this is all the matter and energy floating around in it. Let's break it down a little further. So let's look at g mu nu. This is called the Einstein tensor, and it encodes how space-time is curved. It's built from two key pieces. The Ricci tensor R mu nu, which measures how volumes distort as they move through space-time, and the Ricci scalar R, which is kind of like the total curvature at a point. Then there's the metric tensor G mu nu, which tells you how distances are measured. This combo, the Einstein tensor, is divergence-free, which means it automatically respects energy and momentum conservation, which is awesome for any physical theory. Now jumping to the other side, T mu nu, this guy is the stress energy tensor. It includes all the stuff in the universe, mass, energy, pressure, momentum, all in one neat 4x4 four four matrix. Basically, if you have stars, radiation, dark matter, and electric fields, they all are going to show up here. And in the middle, you've got this constant factor, 8 pi g over c to the fourth, which just makes sure that the units work out and links space-time curvature to energy with the correct scale. Let's build some intuition. Think of space-time like a stretchy rubber sheet. When you, pick, when you place a mass like a planet or a star on it, the sheet bends. Other objects rolling by don't feel a force pulling them in. They're just following straight paths on curved surfaces. That's gravity in Einstein's world. Not a force pulling on things, but geometry curving around mass. Now let's talk about that lambda term, the cosmological constant. Einstein originally added it to stop the universe from expanding or collapsing. At the time, people thought that the universe was static, so he needed some kind of anti-gravity term to hold things in place. But once Hubble showed that the universe was expanding, Einstein called this term his biggest blunder. The irony, decades later, we found out that expansion isn't slowing down, it's accelerating. That acceleration, that's what we now call dark energy and it behaves just like a cosmological constant. So this lambda term that Einstein tried to cancel out may actually be one of the most important pieces of the puzzle. It represents a uniform energy density in an empty space. Sometimes that causes the very fabric of space-time to stretch faster and faster. On, so let's zoom out. On one side, space-time curvature, aka the shape, the geometry. On the other side, we have matter energy and dark energy. Einstein's field equations connect them the presence of mass and energy curve space, and that curved space tells mass and light how to move. This equation powers our understanding of black holes, cosmology, gravitational waves, even the shape and fate of our universe. Einstein gave us a way to write the story of the universe, not just as particles and forces, but as geometry and energy dancing together in these four dimensions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.